And with the ongoing growth that we've had, the tremendous success of City Walk, and in the words of our, our great friend and our partner and our uh, City Walk family member, Emerald Lagasse, we're going to kick it up a notch. And 2014 is the time for a historic level of expansion. We've developed and are presenting today eight new venues that represent a remarkable selection of the new, the unique, the enticing, and the craveable. And that's quite an undertaking to roll out all of this excitement throughout the first half of the year to be ready by June. And I'd like to turn it back over to Mark Woodbury so he can go into the detail of exactly why we are so excited. Mark. Thanks, Rick. Let's do exactly that. To help me do so, I'd like to bring up a good friend of mine, Modesto Akala. And I'll help talk through these concepts. But before he does, come on, Modesto. Vice President of Revenue Operations for CityWalk, which to me is a long way of saying this dude knows everything there is to know about food. He knows the restaurant business soup to nuts, and together we've been working on these concepts that we're going to show you in a second. The basic idea was simple. Hard execute, but simple. Create the best in category of everything you can imagine, whether it's what you want to have as a dining experience, your entertainment experience, your cinema experience, or your shopping experience. So let's, let's take a look. First, a little bit about shopping. You know, Karen Irwin leads our merchandise development group, and she has developed an assortment of product around our character families, which represent some of the best in the business. Marvel, Seuss, Transformers, Despicable Me, and of course, Harry Potter. So in order to give those places a suitable home, we're going to totally renovate the CityWalk uh, retail store and create a completely new venue right in the heart of CityWalk that is an interactive retail experience that would be like none other and house the family of properties that we have that are also like none other. We'll go here to Vesto, switch places with you for a sec, and let's bring these back up and talk a little bit about the new Starbucks. Perfect. So, first of all, we start out with a world class design. And then we take Starbucks from the second floor, we move it down to the entrance of our city. So we're moving it down, doubling the size, over 130 seats for your enjoyment. And this will be located right next to our next concept that we're going to be talking about, which is Cold Stone. And Starbucks people are really great at brand definition. I mean, they, they, they do just a trip job. They're re-imaging Starbucks for this location. 2,400 square feet, great seating up, you know, area outside. It sits right underneath the canopy as you walk into City Walk. So covered seating for Starbucks. And if you're anything like me, you've got to start the morning with a Starbucks. It's right on your way into the park. And that's exactly what you'll be able to do at the new uh, Starbucks. So from Starbucks to ice cream. Oh. When you're on vacation, I think you ought to indulge. Now, Cold Stone does that for you. So we start out with making your favorite ice cream from scratch in front of you. We have this located right again in the entrance of our city, right next door to Starbucks. If you're like me, you like to make your own ice cream. You like to do it at a really cool place. And that's what's going to happen here. It sits right next to Starbucks, right on a really great corner, just under the bridge as you come in and out of, uh, of City Walk, and a great place. And if you don't like ice cream, then surely you must like frozen yogurt. And if you don't like either one of those, I'm not exactly sure what's the matter with you, but you should, you should have that look at. Well, this is a fun twist on dessert, and no pun intended. We're talking about quality ingredients here. We're talking about uh, certified kosher, gluten-free, it's vegan. This uh, Minchies will be located in Lombard Street, which Mark is doing a terrific renovation on. Lombard Street, as you know, goes from the lower part of City Walk up to the upstairs uh, exit of the cinema. It's going to be totally reimagined, lit at night, re landscaped, and new venues along the way, with Menchie's being one of them. Great little patios outside, grab yogurt with the family, sit down, go to see a movie, grab a yogurt, sit down. It happens to be right next door to the uh, bread box, which we'll go to next. Brand new concept. And we talk about the, the concepts. When we imagine these concepts, there are three really simple things that we focus on. Right. And, and the name says it all. Handcrafted sandwiches, bread box. This is your corner deli market. I mean, this is where you go and you get your traditional sandwich or you get that gooey new craft sandwich. It's, it's the very size of our business. 
Secondly, fresh bread all day long. We're going to be making fresh bread, not just one, but multiple types of bread. So when you come in here, you're going to really reminisce of the, the, your favorite sandwich shop that you grew up with. Located right next door to the cinema. In fact, as you exit the cinema, there's a window inside the cinema looking into the bread box. So you can't miss the opportunity or the enticement to go have a sandwich at the bread box. Really fantastic. And that takes us on to our new Italian concept. You know, we have a really great Italian restaurant here right now, Pasta Mori. But as we do with everything, we look for an opportunity to make it better. And we think we have exactly that. Franzo is a working title name for our new Italian kitchen. We're going to take our Italian experience and kick it up several notches to something entirely new. When you go into this place, you'll have a vista right into the kitchen where you'll see them making fresh pasta every day to order. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly the right word. We want to show off our kitchen. You know, our, our theme here in City Walk, really, uh, we're talking about three things. We're talking about fresh ingredients. We're talking about made for you. And we're talking about made in front of you. So when you talk about our Italian kitchen, you'll see us making fresh pasta, simmering sauces, uh, flatbreads. Not only do we have a private dining room to the side, but all aspects of the restaurant, you're going to be able to see us doing the art of cooking. Great location, right in the center of, of City Walk. Totally reimagined next year. These next few venues that we're going to talk about really represent the heart of City Walk. All three of them happen right in the middle of City Walk, and our Italian kitchen is going to be is going to be one of the major features for that, and a great experience uh, in, in the Italian genre. And speaking of Italian genre, if you have not yet had a red oven pizza, well, then you probably have not yet had pizza. You probably didn't know that, but you have not had pizza yet. So be prepared. Yeah. Well, we set out to make what we thought was going to be the best pizza. So um, this artisan-made pizza, the old world tradition of ingredients, is something you commonly see in a full-service restaurant in a more uh, upper-end uh, restaurant. So we decided to just take those ingredients, put them in a fast, casual environment, so we start with double zero flour, the filtered water, some Marzano tomatoes, buffalo mozzarella. Our oven, which is you'll see later on today, can get up to 1,400 degrees. We decided to keep it around 900, which is what makes our crust perfect. I told you you need a lot of food. This is the oven he's talking about. You'll see it a little bit later. Great little location. You walk up, you order your food, you see it, you order your pizza, you see it made right in front of you. It goes in the oven, you watch it cook, you go have a seat, they bring it right to your table. It's really terrific uh, pizza. And that brings us over to Antejitos, which will bring the streets of Mexico City to life right here in City Walk. It's festive, it's colorful, it's vibrant, and the environment matches the food. Yeah, and, and once again, we're talking about fresh sauces, fresh tortillas, uh, skite, table sidewalk, tamale, tamales. The, this is the, really the heart and soul of food of the folks in Mexico. We, we have an amazing restaurant, so when you go out today and you look to your right and you see that towering building, it has two kitchens, two floors, and two menus. All of the kitchens, you can sit around the kitchen and watch us prepare all the food from scratch. You'll see it when you go out. It is, a, it is a, an amazing structure. The interior is amazing as well. The fixtures, the furnishings, the space itself, the environment, the wardrobe, the presentation of the food, everything is just full of life and full of flavor. This is really a spectacular version. It fits right into what we're talking about. We're going for the best in category. This will be best in category when it, goes, when it comes to Mexico. So, you can't have a great place without a great hot dog. We searched the world over for what is the great hot, hot dog. We came across Steve Schussler, who had an idea for the Hot Dog Hall of Fame to bring to life all the great hot dogs. And here is Steve Borman to tell you a little bit more about the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Thank you, Mark. I can tell you how excited we are to open Hot Dog Hall of Fame in Universal uh, City Walk. Hot Dog Hall of Fame is a true slice of Americana. It's mom, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, baseball, and of course, hot dogs. And we Americans love our hot dogs. In a typical year between Memorial Day and Labor Day, Americans consume seven billion hot dogs. Uh, if you strung together every hot dog eaten in a major league ballpark, uh, it would stretch from Yankee Stadium to Candlestick Park. And Hot Dog Hall of Fame, quite frankly, is a collection of the best hot dogs, sausages, and french fries in the world. 
Armenian features iconic and classic dogs from all the great bar parks around the country. You can get a Dodger dog from LA, you can get a Dixie dog from Atlanta, you can get a barbecue dog from KC, a good old fashioned beer brought from Milwaukee, a dirty water dog from New York, or my personal favorite, the Chicago dog. At Hot Dog Hall of Fame, every dog has its day, which means we'll make your hot dog your way, with one exception. We will never, never ever, put ketchup on a hot dog. <laughs> you have to do that your own. But if you want to kick up your experience a notch, you can slide into our gourmet mustard bar. Uh, we have the best mustards from around the world, certified and curated for us from the National Mustard Museum in Mount Cora, Wisconsin. Uh, so we have documentation of that. So please come join us, step up to the plate, work your way around the bases, slide into the box seats, and check out what's going on in the Jumbotron. Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Frankly, the best hot dogs, sausages, and french fries in the world. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. is located right across the street from Antahikas. And when he talks about going into the ballpark, this little venue is full of all kinds of iconography from ballparks, including seats from uh, specific ballparks around the country. That'll be places where you can sit and have a hot dog, a jumbotron, a place with sports on, and a great place for a hot dog. This, you know, you sometimes search the world for a great concept, and sometimes you come upon a great concept. A couple years ago, I was in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, waiting for a flight with my wife. I said to her, I really like some sushi. She said, I really like a hamburger. And so we Googled sushi and hamburger and came up with catfish. So we go in there, we have dinner, we have the most spectacular dinner we could imagine in the most wild place we've ever seen. I called the manager over and Alan shows up and he says, I say to him, what do you think about doing this in Orlando? Well, here's Alan and Marcus from the Cowfish to tell you about it. Thank you for that visit. Thank God he walked in for us. <laughs> and so was the tale of the cow and the fish from two separate places. They had but one wish to bring to the world in ways for the fish an unusual place to enjoy a great dish. I'm Marcus Hall. And I'm Alan Springate, and we are the co-founders of the Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar. Ten years ago, we set out to open up a Pan-Asian restaurant in the small town of Huntersville, North Carolina. After five years of growth, we found what we hoped was going to be our second location for that concept in South Park Mall in Charlotte, North Carolina. Unfortunately, as we were drawing plans, there was not room in that space for a sushi bar, alcohol bar, and room for tables and chairs and guests. Uh, and thank God, this goofball over here was running a gourmet burger joint right on the other side of the wall. So, one night on the phone, as we were saying, this space won't work for our concept. A very, very faithful message and faithful phone call it was. I asked about what about bringing down the wall. Let's bring burgers and sushi together, Harmony and both. And we started talking about building a sushi burger bar. He started talking about it. I said, that is the stupidest idea. <laughs> we were going to get laughed out of town, no doubt. But we did it anyway. <laughs> so, there you go. So today, the Cowfish Boast, big old honking gourmet burger menu, fresh, innovative sushi menu. All done, all natural, all the time, 100% hormone and antibiotic free. And to top it off, in between the two, is it sushi? Is it burger? No, it's burgushi. It's the fusion of sushi and burger. More to come on that. He does this all the time. <laughs> in natural sign, he would do it. We had we the menu, and now the idea was how do you build a restaurant? How, what is a sushi burger bar? And this is where we got to have a lot of fun. This is where we got to put some creativity in, bring the land and the sea, the cow and the fish, east meets west, vanilla ice meets Johnny Cash. <laughs> got the vibe. And bring it all together and give it its own heart, its own soul, and its own environment. We wanted a place where come one, come all. They said it couldn't be done. A place where you can come out with your kids, with your family, go wild. Later on in the evening, you can be all decked out, ready to go out on the town. And that's what we've attempted to achieve with the vibe of the place. We put a lot of focus on kind of cheeky pop art. And we also put a big piece of uh, technology. All our sushi bars have interactive touch screens. We're able to kind of browse the daily news, play a game with the date, or you can even construct a fish that virtual fish drops in the virtual fish tank behind the sushi bar and watches swim while you're eating. So today we operate two units, one in Charlotte, North Carolina one in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're going to let us out of old North Kakalaki to come swim with y'all here. 
and we are we are blessed with this opportunity. I think it's going to be an amazing day for our small business. Thanks for having us. Thank Calpers are going to be located right in the center of City Walk. You went to this lower level entrance. This is a vast uh, atrium space, circulated up the stairway, and then boom, you're into this environment that they were talking about. Pop art, East Beach West. This might have been the first time you ever heard of Gucci, but it will not be the last. Just remember that. That's where it's all going. So, we've talked a lot about uh, these venues today. Everything we've imagined about taking City Walk up to the next level. Is, is in progress and happening, and this is the first phase of an evolution that is going to keep CityWalk on the front edge of the best in class of everything you can imagine.